the primarily objective here is to help you learn quickly the first steps that's the emphasis here is learning by doing therefore the best way to learn is to try it yourself try to work through examples and it will give you a feel for the way that R operates we will go through vectors matrices lists data frames how to import data to R and how to use data sets. R is an open source programming language. It has lots of facilities for problem solving through statistical computing. As it is open source, that means that uh, it is a software for which the original source code is made freely available and may be redistributed and modified. So R is not just a software or programming language or an excellent visualization tool. Uh, it is backed by the works of community of statisticians, scientists, engineers in the form of packages. And all these packages are freely available for you and everyone else to use. So you can use R for statistical computing, data mining, data analysis, machine learning, predictive modeling, quantitative analysis, optimi optimization, or operation research. On the other hand, our studio that is based on R uh, has very convenient graphical environment. It is more flexible and powerful, and you can directly interact with the code and manipulate complex data. So, uh, after you install our studio, you can simply double click and it will open. It looks like this. Uh, if you don't want to install our studio, uh, you can use its cloud version. This is what it looks like. And here is the address. You would need to sign up and log in. You can even do it with your Google account. Uh, and simply get started. You will get an interface that is almost identical to this one that we're using here. So let's get started. We will open a new script by going to File, New File, and our script. Now our editor will open. Editor here in the upper left corner is used for creating, running, and saving scripts which consists of a series of commands that are to be executed in sequence as a package. You can also uh, use this window to view data sets. We'll, we'll see that a little later. So for example, this is a comment. You can see that it, start, it starts with the hash And uh, R uh, ignores everything that comes after hash, but uh, it's a good way. Uh, <clears throat> it's a good way, uh, good practice to use comments because uh, if you do, you will be able to go back and see how you named your variables, what each step means, and so on. Uh, so let's do some simple operations here. Okay, so this is my script and uh, these four commands will be executed after I click run. See here at the bottom, uh, there is an output for each of these. Another option how to run this script is by using control, alt, and R at the same time. <clears throat> so let's try that. Okay, it ran again. <clears throat> Here, our interface can be used to, uh, besides creating new files, you can open, save, uh, print, quit, and so on. Um, so let's save our script, for example. 
can choose, for example, desktop, name your file. and save it. Then you decide to open it. <clears throat> uh, it will automatically uh, be offered to be opened in our studio. So we can save our scripts and console here at the bottom corner, bottom left corner, uh, is used uh, to get your output immediately. So, for example, if I do it here, 2 plus 3, I will get the output immediately. So, it is used for some, uh, to interactively use R. You enter commands directly into a console and you get results immediately. So, uh, if you want to clear the console, uh, you would use control L. So let's try that. So control L. So uh, it is, R is very similar uh, as, for example, Excel or MATLAB uh, or your calculator. So if you want to do addition, division, you would use very similar commands. Square root, natural log, meaning uh, the base is Z. If you want to specify your base, for example, base 10, exponentiation, absolute value. You can also put several commands on the same line, but the only thing is you need to use semicolon. And you will get both outputs. However, in the long run, uh, writing scripts is a better option and using your editor uh, because you can execute many commands at the same time, uh, you can complete more complex tasks, and um, you can save it, edit it, and reuse it. You also have uh, convenient comments uh, that can help you distinguish what exactly did you use and why did you use it. In the upper right corner, you can see here the history window where all the commands that I entered are visible here. You can double click, click it, and it will appear in your console, and click enter, and it will execute one more time. However, if you want to edit it, just double click, and before clicking enter, change the value. Another option is to use upper arrow on your keyboard and you would get the same result. You want to clear uh, your history, you would go to your broom here. Let's do it. And you need to confirm. Now let's clear the window. And we will go uh, towards the second part, uh, variable names. So instead, we, we used uh, R now as a calculator. But uh, if you want to reuse certain values, for example, A, uh, A is 12. And now, uh, if you want to see what is the value of variable A, uh, we would get a result. So in this way, uh, we are able to reuse this variable. Uh, for example, 4 times A is 48. Uh, we don't have to repeatedly enter a value of 12. We have our variable here. And it's always a good option, uh, uh, good option to have your variables instead of just using uh, numbers, especially in your scripts where you definitely want to reuse your variables. 
So how to choose variable names? Uh, so uh, there are several rules. Uh, variables are case sensitive. So A is not the same as uh, this A. You have to start uh, with a letter. So I can have a variable A15. Or I can start with a dot. Instead, we, we used uh, R now as a calculator. But uh, if you want to reuse certain values, for example, A, uh, A is 12. And now, uh, if you want to see what is the value of variable A, uh, we would get a result. So in this way, uh, we are able to reuse this variable. Uh, for example, 4 times A is 48. Uh, we don't have to repeatedly enter a uh, value of 12. We have our variable here. And it's always a good option, uh, uh, good option to have your variables instead of just using uh, numbers especially in your scripts where you definitely want to reuse your variables. So how to choose variable names? Uh, so uh, there are several rules. Uh, variables are case sensitive. So A is not the same as uh, this A. You have to start uh, with a letter. So I can have a variable A15, or I can start with a dot. So dot A15 is also okay. However, we cannot use dot and then number, dot 15. This one will not work. Uh, you can use letters, numbers, uh, dot, and you can also use uh, underscore. So A15 is also okay. So do not use spaces. Uh, do not use language specific characters. Do not use punctuation characters. So if you're not sure how to do something, uh, you will be able to use help. In the bottom right window, there is help. And for example, if we use SQRT, Uh, we will see the description, usage, uh, details, and also examples, references, and so on. So whatever you want to use, and you're not sure how to do it, you can use this help option, and you can also Google it. There are many guides available online. For example, How to plot. There are lots of details with examples that you can use. So there are a couple of data types. We have three to be exact. We have numeric, logical, and character. 
we will show three different vectors. A vector is a sequence of data elements of the same basic type. So for example, our vector A will be numerical. We can check that by using class command. It will tell us it's numeric. So these two characters are actually um, used to, should be read as a single symbol. It's like an arrow pointing to the variable to which the value is assigned. This is known as the assignment operator. So there will not be immediately visible result. But from now on, A, variable A, uh, will have values that we uh, assigned and it can be used in subsequent arithmetic expressions. So uh, another part of this vector uh, is C. What is C? C uh, stands for concatenation. So basically we assigned this vector to variable A. So if we reuse A, it has these three values assigned. So let's go to logical uh, data type. For example, B, assignment operator, concatenation, true, false, true, true. You can see here, if you go to environment in our upper right uh, window, uh, that A and B are now memorized and can be reused. If we click, if we enter B, we will get what it contains. And the class of B is logical. The third option is to use character string. So, for example, A, B, C, C. This is what our C looks like and its class, its character. So note that if you want to use characters, um, you need to use quotes to present them. Okay. So now the second part of our presentation. Uh, let's define vectors. So a vector is a sequence of data elements of the same basic type. Uh, we have already mentioned three types, numeric, logical, and character. Uh, so we have defined our vector A uh, that consists of uh, numbers two, three, and five. Uh, the length of our vector is three. We have three elements. And if we want to extract, for example, the third element, uh, we would use A and third element in square brackets. R is a uh, one based indexing rather than zero based. In some other languages, uh, the first element is uh, indexed as zero. Here, the first element is number one. So the third element will be number three. If you want to update elements, we would also use 
indexing. For example, A, and then its second element, we want to assign, we use assignment operator, value 10. And now our vector A is 2, 10, 5. So we have just updated the second element. Uh, now, if we want to add values to the end of this vector, uh, do A, vector A, and then switch elements, elements 4 to 6, and then assign values 2, 2, and 2. Now, our vector A has a uh, 4th, 5th, and 6th element added. Now, if we want to truncate the first two elements, so our new A becomes only first two values of an already existing element vector. Uh, so we would use column uh, to separate it. Uh, for example, if we want to use first four elements, uh, it would be one to four, one column four. If we want to delete our vector, we could just assign it null. So now it will be an empty vector. Now let's try uh, problem one, the first hands-on problem. So it asks us to create vectors uh, A and B. We will use our assignment operator and concatenation. Vector B. Show class of A. It's numeric. Show length of B. B has three elements. Uh, show second element of A. So we will use square brackets and we will enter value two in those brackets. Uh, multiply each element of b by 10. So we will reassign this variable b. Instead of elements of b, now each element uh, will be 10 times larger. So our new b becomes 30, 50, and 40. Update third element of vector a to 1. So vector a, third element, will be updated to 1. So our vector A is now 151 instead of 154. Finally, add, subtract, multiply, and divide A and B. Now let's do, it, do that in the same line using semicolon. And we will get uh, four outputs. So these arithmetic operations of vectors are performed member by member. Uh, meaning member wise. So if two vectors are of unequal length, the shorter one will be recycled in order to match the longer vector. Uh, so for example, our vectors A and B, A is 1, 5, 1, and B is 30, 50, 40. Uh, so first element, elements of each are uh, added, subtracted, multiplied, and divided. Sequencing uh, is created like this. So using SEQ and then minimum value, maximum value, and then step. 
or an increment. So this is the formula on how to create it. Let's try it out. Uh, yes, also if you, the default value of our stack, if you don't uh, use any particular number, uh, the default will be one. That means that if we do sequence of four, nine, know that we just uh, express the minimum value and the maximum value without the step. That's why the step will be one. And it will show us all the numbers between four and nine. However, if we want to define step or increment, for example, four, 16, and then two, uh, we will get listed all the values from four to 16 with increments of two. So four, six, eight, 10, and so on. So sequence is used for equidistant series of numbers uh, with particular number of steps or jumps. Another function is replicate. Replicating. And it is created as REP. And then which value you want to replicate? And how many times? That's what you need to define. Let's try this. Replicate two, five times. If we assign vector seven, nine, 13 to the variable x, we can replicate x three times. So all these values will be repeated three times. You want to do, if you want to replicate x on column three, uh, this shows how many times. So the first element will be replicated once, second element twice, and the third element three times. For example, if you do replicate, one to two, how many times? 10 and 15. So what will this command do? It will replicate, these are actually numbers one and two. The first value one will be shown 10 times and the second value two will be shown 15 times. <clears throat> So the wrap function is often used for things such as group codes. Um, if, for example, if it is known that the first 10 observations are men and the last 15 are women, uh, and you coded uh, men and women as ones and twos, you can use this command. Now let's try it through a problem. Problem number two uh, asks us to replicate value 10 12 times. So first we will assign value of 10 to our variable x and we will replicate it 12 times. Now, Assign value y as one, two, three, and replicate it five times. Assign value three and six
and replicate it. Okay. Uh, replicate it first element five times, second element twice. So we'll create a vector with values five and two. Now let's present our output. Now we are asked to create a sequence of elements. Sequence from 50 to 70. with steps of three. Uh, the final question is sequence from 10 to 100 with steps of five. And this is what we get. Now let's define matrices. So all the elements of a matrix or vector must be of the same type. So we're using uh, numerical values here. Create matrix A by using matrix and then values of a matrix will be between one and six. So one, two, three, four, five, six. And then we need to define number of rows and number of columns. So let's create matrix three by two. And this is what our matrix looks like. Now let's use some random numbers. For example, R is a sample. So values between one and 100, and we want 12 values over there. 12 values chosen uh, in this interval. So this is what our R will look like. Some random values within boundaries. So let's assign our matrix B uh, that uses elements of R, these specific elements. And he has three rows and four columns. And this is what B looks like. Uh, these elements in brackets here, in square brackets, one, two, three, one, two, three, four, are names of our rows and columns. So for example, we want to change names of our matrix B, we can do it by assigning new names. Now let's change names of our columns. Concatenation, and then we use characters. And this is what B looks like now. We want to find uh, dimensions or number of rows and columns in our matrix. For example, matrix C has dimensions, dimensions three and two. That means it has three rows and two columns. Dimensions of our matrix B are three by four, three rows and four columns. If you want to transpose a matrix, meaning uh, to flip it, basically, uh, for example, our matrix C looks like this, but the transposed version 
is flipped. So rows become columns and columns become rows. Let's go to problem number three. The task is to create vectors with 16 random elements. Okay. We will use sample function. Values between 1 and 50, uh, 16 elements. Okay. Now we'll do the same thing for vector B. Now create four by four matrices. that consists of values from A and B. Okay, A, and then we create a number of rows, sign number of rows and number of columns. Four. And let's see what our matrix looks like. Our matrix B, It'll be exactly the same, but it will use elements from vector B. And we did it. Now, uh, change names of rows and columns of matrix A. So this is our matrix A. We want to change row names of A. And we want it to be A, B, C, and D. And column names E, F, G, and H. Okay. Finally, we are asked to print the matrix C. So this one is simple. Simply type print. And this is what our matrix I want to show you some important statistical functions. So let's create some data set. For example, let's call it X with some random numbers between 50 and 100. And we want to have 10 values. Now, range of our values can be found with the function range. Maximum and minimum, then sum of all our elements, mean, median, uh, okay, variance, standard deviation, can be also very easily be calculated. Now let's try it ourselves with another example. So we are asked to create a vector with 100 elements. Now it will be a little more expanded data set. So X is between 880 and 1000 and we need 100 elements okay this these are our values we're asked to create maximum minimum sum okay maximum minimum sum of all values mean
median range variance oops, and standard deviation. I want to show you some important statistical functions. So let's create some data sets. For example, let's call it X with some random numbers between 50 and 100. And we want to have 10 values. Now, range of our values can be found with the function range. Maximum and minimum, then sum of all our elements, mean, median, uh, okay, variance, standard deviation, can be also very easily be calculated. Now let's try it ourselves with another example. So we are asked to create a vector with 100 elements. Now it will be a little more expanded data set. So x is between 880 and 1000 and we need 100 elements okay this these are our values we are asked to create maximum minimum sum okay maximum minimum sum of all values mean median range variance oops, and standard deviation So we have talked about vectors and matrices. Now, uh, let's define lists. A list is a generic vector containing other objects. And it, it could be sometimes useful to combine a collection of objects into a larger composite object. And this can be done using lists. So you can construct a list from its components with a function list. The components of the list are named according to the argument names used in list. So let's try all of that. Let's define our list. So A, that's the name of our element. One through five, so it's numeric. Name of the second element, B, and its character, January. And then, the third element is obviously logical. This is our list. This is what it looks like. And our current names of our list are A, B, and empty. We haven't defined the name of our third character, just what, which values it contains. Now let's update names of the list to, so for example, first, second, and third.
So the names of our list elements are now changed. Now we can also, same as with vectors or matrices, we can access, update, and remove elements. So for example, third element of our list is true and false. Uh, by clicking L and the dollar sign, uh, we'll get options which element you want to choose. For example, let's choose second. And we will get the content of a second list element. Let's update our list by adding fourth element to the end. And let's call it new element. Now we have a new element. Let's change our list. So it's third, so it's third element becomes 100. So it's third element is now 100 instead of true false. Now, if we want to delete the second element of our list, we would just delete it with null. And now we see that we have first, third, and that added new element. Let's try another problem. So we need to create a list with these elements. So L is a list of elements A is one through ten. This is what our list looks like. Uh, set names of the elements. Names of our list will be A, B, and C. X is the second element. This is our second element. Now, uh, add a string with your name to the end of the list. Uh, so it will be the fourth element. And I will add my name. We have the fourth element. And now let's remove the first element. So you can see here that I, that I used the assignment operator to assign elements to the list. However, I used the sign equal in brackets. And that's actually a good practice. Uh, always assign elements. And if you're using brackets, you usually need equal sign. Okay. Uh, data frames. Uh, a data frame is used for storing data tables. It is a list of vectors of equal length. For example, uh, we will create a data frame now. Uh, that contains three vectors. So this data frame will have three vectors, and let's call them exam one, 
with some random numbers between 70 and 90, and we want five elements. We want exam two. It looks the same. And exam three, let's just change its range between 60 and 100. So let's assume that these values are what students, that five students uh, took three exams, and here are their results. So for example, Exam one, here are the results, and so on. So let's create a, a data frame, meaning these three vectors of the same length combined. So D is data frame. that consists of exam one, exam two, and exam three. So this is D. Now let's give these students some names. So let's change row names. I want to give them some names. This is an updated data frame. So a data frame is a cross between a matrix and the list. Uh, so columns, meaning our variables, exam one, two, and three, these are our variables, uh, can be of different types, but they all must be the same, same length. We saw that lists do not have that demand. So now, uh, we know the data frame looks a lot like Excel, and many times uh, we will get our data in Excel. So I have created one simple file. That consists of a couple of names and three exams. And you can see here that I have a header in my first row, that I have some values here. However, Susan, for example, didn't attend exam number one. So there is no value. And when the data are missing, you would type NA. So let's save this file as tab delimited dot text on my desktop, okay. Save it. Okay, the next step would be uh, to set your working directory. To do this, try to find out first where your working directory is set at this moment. 
get protein directory. <clears throat> okay. Then it could be that you want to change the path that is returned <clears throat> in such a way that it includes the folder where you have stored your data set. So we would use command set working directory. And for example, I go to properties, I get something like this. This is the path to my folder. I will copy it and place it here within clothes. The only thing I need to change are the slashes that need to be forward facing. Now, our working directory is desktop. So, if you save your data like this, you can use one of the easiest and most general options to import your file to R. Uh, so, we will create a table. So, we'll read table named exams.txt, right? That's text, and it's called exams. And emphasize that you have header. If you don't, simply use false. And this is our imported table. So the structure of our table is it's a data frame, seven observations, four variables. So even names are our variable here. And then each variable consists of these numbers. We use attributes. Of t, we'll see just the names of our variables, class, and row names. Now let's set row names. Row names for table t. So what we want to do here is we want names, Emma, David, and so on, to become uh, our own names instead of one through seven. So we want to move it to the left. So our row names will be the first column. This is our first column, names. And now we want our table T to lose the first column because this is what it looks like now. Okay, now our row names are here, but now the first column name is not needed, right? So T now becomes T, but without the first column. So space, comma, minus one. Remove the first column. And this is our new T. Row names are student names and columns are just exams, exams and scores. So we can do uh, the same thing uh, in Excel. Second. Okay, if we don't use uh, tab delimited, we can save our file as comma delimited. So CSV 
Okay, this one. Let's save it like that. So now it is that CSV file. But what is the difference when you want to import it? The difference is you would use the same thing again. It's a read table. And then exams.csv header true. But we also have a separator here. Because if you open this, see we have commas here. We would just need to define our separator, call it table one. As comma. Structure of my table one is again the same, and this is what my table one looks like. So it would repeat the same steps to switch row names into names as I did before. But I don't have to do it again because I have my table one already ready. Now let's extract components. So this is my table one. And I want to see how our students did on exam one. So exam one, I'm using dollar sign. Here are their scores in exam one. I want to see Emma's results. Here are Emma's results. So I could do uh, first student, all results. As I'm leaving the blank space, that means all. So this, this, here are Emma's results. I can also I don't have to use the first student. I can use the student by its name. So, for example, how did Carl do uh, on all exams except the first one? Exam two and exam three. Here are Carl's results. Now, uh, let's assume that, okay, Susan uh, didn't attend exam one, uh, but later she took that exam. So she now has a score. So let's change it to T Susan scored on her first exam 67. And here is her score and I included here. Okay, now let's assume that we made a mistake. It's not David, it's Alex actually, and we got it wrong. So let's update row names of table T. To be more specific, that's the second student and it's called Alex. So data cars, this is how we load the data. Uh, if you want to see the data,
we would use cars. Speed and distance. So let's learn a little more about this data set. So it's speed of a vehicle and stopping distances. So what distance is needed for a vehicle to stop? We have a data frame with 50 observations and just two variables. And we are asked to plot the data first. So we will set axis, x is cars, speed, and y is stopping side distance. Okay, this is what our X and Y look like. Now let's plot our data. I'll use function plot X and Y. Okay, this is what we have so far. But if we add chart title as stopping site distance versus speed, So this is title, your title. X axis is speed in miles per hour. And y axis is stopping site distance in feet. So this is x axis label. This is y-axis label. And now let's execute this. Now our graph, our figure looks differently. We have x and y names and the figure uh, names. Okay. So we have created this. Now create a vector showing median speed and stopping side distance. So median and max can be done like this uh, with supply. Okay, so what is uh, supply? Uh, so uh, there are two options. S apply and L apply. So uh, 
L apply uh, is very similar to apply, but it takes a list as an input and returns list as an output. Uh, if you want a vector as an input and output, you can use S apply. So the best is to use S apply or L apply as it makes sense for your data and once you want to receive back. Um, so we're, we're using vectors now for S apply. And we're using data cars. And we're using function median. We want list function max. Try it out. So as apply vectors, it gave us median speed fifteen and distance uh, stopping side distance of thirty six. And when we used L apply, uh, we got data differently shown. Now it's as a list. Okay, add row at the end with speed 20 miles per hour and stopping side distance of 50 feet. Okay, let's do that. Let's add row. Uh, we would use, we have two options, add row or column by using R bind and C bind. Obviously, R bind is to add row and C bind to add, add a column. So we will add row like this, cars. I want to show you what how our cars look like now. So we have uh, 50 different observations. This is the last one. But now I want to create cars with additional R bind data set cars. And we want to add 20 miles per hour and 50 stopping side distance. Try it out. So now we have the 51st observation with our dead added data. I want to add column at the end showing speed limit of 25 miles per hour for all rows. Okay, now we will use C bind function. So our new data will be this, C bind to which data set, data set cars, uh, we want to add speed limit in miles per hour. And it is equal to, we will replicate 
25 miles per hour, 51 times. So we want here another column, third column, that will have 51 values, 51 value of 25 miles per hour. And let's see what it looks like now. Okay, now we have the third, we got the third column. So the first one is speed, the second uh, is distance, and the third one is speed limit in miles per hour. So now uh, we're asked to extract only stopping side distance values. So that's in our second column here. And we can simply use indexing, so square brackets. We want all rows and only the second column. And here are just stopping side distance. 